Kai is a below average human who works for the Urza Foundation, and despite being too weak to actually do anything about it, he still wants to do everything he can to prevent another race war and maintain the peace of this world. One day, he finds a girl chained up on a sky platform, and from the way she looks, she is apparently half angel and half demon, and upon seeing him, she begs him to help free her. However, none of this makes sense to him since angels and demons have been at war with humans for a long time, yet she hasn't said even one racist insult towards him, so he knows something must be terribly wrong. Some time ago, Kai steps out of a car and uses a pair of binoculars to start his observation. Meanwhile, his teammates are sitting in the back of the car and they are bored out of their minds. They hate having to come out here and wait for Kai, but he always observes the graveyard for at least a hundred seconds, so there's no way he'd stop in the middle of it. Centuries ago, there had been a long-standing war between the demons, the celestials, the spirits, mythical beasts, and humans, and the war causes a great deal of devastation. So Kai wants to make sure something like that never happens again. He is currently a part of the Urza Foundation, and he has an obligation to observe this graveyard, where the demons have been sealed away to make sure nothing goes wrong. After five minutes have passed, Kai puts his binoculars down and reports that no abnormalities have been spotted, so that the demons are still properly sealed away. He heads back to the car and they all start heading back to base, but along the way, his teammate asks Kai why he needs to check the graveyard so often when no demons have managed to escape in the past century. Kai acknowledges that the graveyard is decently secure, but is part of their job as members of the Humanity Aegis Agency to make sure that the demons never get out. The girl understands his point, but the guy still complains that there are three other graveyard seals in the world, so their patrols are useless if they are only keeping track of this one. Kai assures him that the other graveyards are also being adequately monitored by other agents because humanity can't afford to let a demon get loose. So even if the world is currently at peace, Kai refuses to let his guard down. Back at the agency, Kai is doing some training with a mythical beast simulation, however, the system warns him that it is really dangerous for him to attempt to train with a simulation of this level, since he is certified trash, however, Kai ignores this warning and charges at the dragon before attempting to knock it off its feet. However, the system was right as his attack didn't even budge the dragon, so if this wasn't a simulation, he would have become dragon food. But luckily, Saki is there to turn it off before he gets hurt. She complains about Kai taking too many risks, but he justifies it by saying training is meant to be risky, otherwise he wouldn't be able to improve himself. With how hard Kai works, the girl jokes that his name would have gone down in history if he was around to fight in the War of the Five Races. But unlike the Prophet Sid, Kai knows he's not cut out for something like that. He honestly finds it hard to believe that a human could ever win against any of the heroes of the different races. They were immensely powerful warriors who led their races into battle. Vanessa of the Demons, Alfreya of the Celestials, Kyoko of the Spirits, and Rathi of the Mythical Beasts. There's no telling what could have happened if those four were still around, but luckily, they were all defeated by the Prophet Sid. However, that's just the story they've been told since there is no evidence that Sid or his golden sword even exists in the first place. The other heroes all have videos that prove that they were there, but strangely, there's nothing about Sid. Even with the lack of evidence though, people still like to believe that he exists because it is comforting. After that, Seki goes over to Ashran who got knocked out by the dragon, and tells him to get up since they need to start thinking about their gift for Jin's promotion celebration. Ashran says they can just get her a bouquet of flowers or something, but Saki thinks that is too boring since everyone else will be getting flowers as well. Jean is getting transferred to the royal capital of Urzak for her exceptional abilities despite only being 17, so they need to get her a special gift for the occasion. Just then, Kai receives a message from Jean asking him to meet her tomorrow morning, and she specifically asks for this to be kept secret from Ashran and Saki, but they are already looking at the phone, so they start asking if he is dating Jean. And Kai doesn't want to answer any of their questions, so he just decides to run away. By the next morning, Kai is out waiting for Jean to arrive at their meeting spot, and she soon shows up, clearly having put a lot of effort into dressing up for the occasion. Kai is surprised that she actually showed up on time for once since normally he would end up having to wait at least an hour or so. Jean calls him rude for saying that, but she admits that she was extra careful to be on time for their date since she's going to be transferred soon. Just then, she notices that Kai is still in his uniform despite today being his day off, but that is just because Kai came here right after finishing his morning training, so he didn't have time to change. Kai is literally the only guy who would act so casual about going on shopping with her, but that's what she likes about him. The two of them proceed with the shopping, and while Jean is checking out some jewelry, Kai asks what the purpose of this shopping trip is, so she explains that she wants to get goodbye gifts for Saki and Ashran. She knows they are planning to get her a gift, so she wants to give them something in return before she goes since it might be the last time they ever see each other. Kai says she's exaggerating a bit since her transfer will only last two years, so she'd be back here in no time. 
but then Ashran and Saki would have completed their service as soldiers, so they would be civilians at that point. In fact, in two years, Kai and Jean are probably going to be the only soldiers left with the Human Ages Agency. Kai tries to cheer Jean up by reminding her that she's been working hard so she can take over as the head of Urzak after her father steps down. She's been dreaming about it since she was a kid, so she shouldn't be sad about getting closer to her dream. After that, they go on with their shopping and have a fun time with one another, so by the time they are done for the day, Jin thanks Kai for agreeing to come with her since he made the trip a lot easier for her. While waiting at a stoplight, Jean recalls the time Kai went into the graveyard at the age of 10. He was there with Jean's father, but somehow he ended up falling into the realm where the demons had been sealed. And at the bottom, he could clearly see the fabled golden sword that belonged to Sid, but he doesn't like talking about it since no one would believe it. It was after this that Kai began his mission to ensure that demons would never be unleashed upon the world again, and he still feels the same way now. Which is why Jean knows he is still going to be a soldier by the time she gets back. And on that note, she asks Kai if it's possible for them to become more than just friends after she returns. But in the middle of her confession, since there are no fireworks to interrupt her, reality begins to collapse. For some reason, Kai is the only one that can see crazy stuff that's happening and before he can process what's going on. Something called the World Reincarnation Order is executed, and he opens his eyes to find himself in a destroyed version of the city. He is confused at first, but his confusion quickly turns to fear as he sees a demon come around the corner. As soon as the demon notices Kai, it immediately starts casting an attack spell to kill him, so Kai is forced to block it with his weapon case. He managed to survive that initial attack, but the demon isn't done yet as it begins to charge up a secondary attack, so Kai makes a run for his gun, and as soon as he gets to it, he loads some of his special bullets and uses them to cancel out the demon's magic. The demon is shocked that a human was able to cancel out its magic, but it's all because his bullets are made with elven magic as their base, so it is enough to counteract demon magic. The demon tries something different and begins casting a spell at his feet, but Kai managed to jump out of the way and close the distance before firing a point-blank shot that incinerates the demon. Kai is relieved that his plan works since that last bullet is made in order to reproduce the effect of a dragon's fire, but he has never actually gotten to use it before. This is also his first time fighting a demon, so he is glad he was able to move like he does during training. He just needs to hope he doesn't run into a dragon though. All of a sudden, Kai hears a voice coming from behind him, so he turns around and finds another demon staring at him and wondering how a filthy human could have possibly managed to defeat a demon. Kai raises his gun and asks why the demon is able to speak the human language if it detests humans so much, so the demon says he found it easier to order around his human slaves by speaking the language. Kai is shocked to learn that humans are slaves in this world, but the demon refuses to elaborate further and says it will get rid of Kai immediately since he seems pretty dangerous. The demon is about to fire a powerful spell at Kai, but at the last second, someone throws a flashbang and while the demon is blinded, they pull Kai into a car and speed off. Inside, Kai is surprised to find out that the girl that saved him is actually Saki. Saki says she has never met him before, so she's not sure how he knows her name, and no matter how much Kai insists that they know each other, she still doesn't remember him, and neither does Ashran. Saki and Ashran assume Kai must be having a psychotic episode because of the demon attack, but he genuinely knows them and can't believe they've forgotten about him. He tries telling them that they were on the same team in the Humanity Aegis Agency, but Saki has never heard of the agency and says she's a soldier in the human resistance. Kai has no idea what Saki is talking about, so he asks them to explain what happened in this world. They tell Kai that in the War of the Five Races, humans ended up losing. 30 years ago, the other four races took over the world, so humanity was nearly eradicated. And the ones that did manage to survive were all forced to run and stay hidden. Kai is slowly starting to put the pieces together and realizes that this place is the city of Vashal after it had been destroyed. Kai is led down into an underground tunnel, while Ashran explains to him that the cities all over the world have been claimed by the four other races, and they mostly fight among themselves to claim new territory now. This city in particular was taken over by the demons, which is why humans had to move underground in order to survive. They took some of the underground spaces that were still intact and remodeled them to become a safe haven for humans. This way, they can keep other humans safe and organize troops to fight back against the other races. Kai stops for a moment and asks why humanity lost the war, but Saki and Ashran think the answer is pretty obvious since no humans could possibly defeat a demon on their own, and on top of that, all the races have absurdly powerful heroes, so humans stood no chance. Kai is aware of how powerful demons and the other races are, but humanity was able to win in his timeline because of the prophet Sid, so he asks the two of them what happened to him. However, they've never heard of anyone by that name. Kai tries to explain that Sid is meant to be a human hero who defeats all the other races, 
but he obviously doesn't exist in this world since humanity wouldn't be forced to live underground if they had someone like that to fight for them. Just then, they hear a commotion nearby, so Saki and Ashran realize that the main court must be back, so they explain to Kai that there are many underground human cities around the world, and each one has their main court that defends them. Here, the commander is the one who protects everyone, and Kai can't believe what he is seeing as the commander turns out to be Jean. Jean is greeted by Saki and Ashran, and they tell her about how they found Kai out on the surface, so they brought him inside. Jean compliments them on their good work and walks past Kai, showing no recognition whatsoever. Kai can't accept that Jean doesn't remember him, so he tries to remind her that they were literally shopping together a few minutes ago, but Jean has no recollection of this, so she says she's just going to leave. Before she goes, Kai asks why she's acting like a man when her dream was always to surpass her father as his daughter, and this statement makes her pause for a moment, but Kai is quickly stopped from saying anything more to her. That night, Kai spends his time looking through the records of this world, and everything is the same aside from the fact that all records involving him or the prophet Sid do not exist anymore. However, something still doesn't make sense to him since if Sid never existed in this world to seal away the other races, then why do the graveyards he created still exist? To investigate, Kai heads over to the graveyard the next day and finds that the blockade stone that was meant to keep its seal has been removed, so he heads inside and discovers the golden sword of Sid inside. He walks up to it and grabs the sword, at which point he hears a voice telling him to never relinquish the sword because it is the world coordinate key, otherwise known as the code holder. The sword then opens a gate which transports Kai to a mysterious platform and upon climbing the stairs he finds the half-angel half-demon girl chained up. Kai is having a hard time figuring out what race this girl is but then the girl tells him her name is Rin and pleads to be saved once more before passing out. Kai approaches the girl and he's still debating whether he should help her or not. But Kai mainly hates demons and she doesn't look like a demon so against his better judgement he decides to free her. He tries using his sword to slash the chains in half. But the chains are too tough and show no signs of damage whatsoever. Maxki tries using his bullets, but even that isn't enough to get the chains off. He doesn't know what to do anymore since he doesn't have any other weapons on him, but then he recalls that he's still got that special sword, so he tries recalling what it was called and says the words, Code Holder, out loud. As he does this, his gun sword begins to transform into the Golden Code Holder, and Kai can't believe he is really holding the sword Sid used to save humanity in his timeline. He raises the sword and strikes at the chains once more, and for a split second, it looks like he just destroyed the dimension. But things go back to normal, and the chains are cut in half. The girl is released and begins falling to the ground, so Kai catches her, and as soon as she opens her eyes, she gets startled and flies away from Kai, before yelling for someone called Vanessa to show herself. She says she wants a rematch with Vanessa, and it's not fair for her to send a wimpy demon to assassinate her. However, before Kai can explain that he's not a demon, Rin has already begun attacking him because she hates demons. He manages to roll out of the way of the first attack, but he can't do the same for the second energy blast Rin sends his way. He's starting to regret helping her after all. But as the blast is heading straight for him, he recalls something the system mentioned about the code holder being able to sever fate itself. So he takes the code holder and uses it to slash the magic ball in half. The magic disappears, much to the surprise of Kai, and Rin can't believe it either since a lowly demon would never be able to block her attack. Kai finally tells her that he's not a demon and he has no idea where she got that idea from since he has no wings or tail, so he's clearly human. Rin realizes her mistake, so she apologizes for mistaking him for a demon and attacking him out of nowhere, but she happens to really hate demons, so it's always straight violence on sight whenever she meets one. Since she hates demons as well, Kai at least has confirmation that she's not a demon, but he still doesn't know what race she is, so he asks her. So she begs Kai not to ask her about it. Kai agrees to drop the subject about her race for now, but he still has other questions he would like to ask, like where the hell they are. Unfortunately, Rin has no idea what this place is either. All she remembers is that she was fighting Vanessa and all of a sudden, she found herself in prison here. Kai recognizes the name and asks if Rin is referring to the same Vanessa that's the hero of demons and Rin confirms it. He is surprised Rin would pick a fight with a hero. So he asks if she is really that strong, and in response, Rin proudly states that she could wipe out an entire army of demons on her own if she wanted, but from what she has seen, Kai is equally as impressive as her since he was able to stop her attacks. She asks how he managed to pull it off. So Kai is about to tell her about his sword, but just then, he notices a portal behind Rin, which a hideous monster emerges from. The monster says something about the fate singularity entity having awakened, and since it poses a great threat to the new world, it will commence protocol to remove it. The monster attempts to strike Rin down, but Kai pulls her to safety at the last second. 
The power of this monster is no joke, so Kai says he and Rin have no choice but to run, and Rin agrees, so he grabs her hand and they both flee. Unfortunately, they don't know where the exit is, and the monster still has access to the portal, so it reaches its tentacle into the portal and grabs Rin. With this, it declares and has captured the singularity, so it begins the termination protocol and forms several orbs to erase Rin from existence. Kai can't bear to see this, so he decides to quit standing there and take action to save Rin. He uses the golden sword again, and with it, he slices the monster's tendril in half, while also doing significant damage to the dimension. The monster spots him and recognizes that he is holding the forbidden sword, but doesn't understand why the sword is here, or how a human could have gotten their hands on it. Since Rin is free now, Kai doesn't plan on seeing a reason to stick around to find out what the monster is going to do, so he grabs Rin and jumps through the hole in the dimension, leading them back to the graveyard on Earth. Kai is a bit confused, but he is glad they managed to escape in one piece, and Rin is so especially relieved since she was really scared she would die. This is the first time anyone has ever cared enough to help her, since her entire life, she has been told by all the other races that she is not one of them. However, of all the races, demons were the cruelest to her, always calling her an abomination, which is why Rin got into a huge fight with Vanessa. Kai comforts her and says he knows how she feels since all his friends no longer remember him, so he feels like he is all alone in the world. The history he remembers is one where humans won the Great War of the Five Races, but in this world, it seems demons are occupying the human cities. Rin is a bit confused since she doesn't recall demons ever gaining the upper hand against humans. In fact, right around the time she fought with Vanessa, she recalls that humans were starting to win the war and the demons were complaining that it was all because of the human hero. Kai gets excited and asks if Rin remembers Sid, but she unfortunately never got to meet him, so she can't say for certain. Kai realizes he may have overreacted, so he apologizes to Rin, but at least he has confirmed that he and Rin recall the same past, so they must be the same. Rin gets close to Kai and says that he's the first person to ever group himself with her, and it makes her pretty happy. They both leave the graveyard a little while later, and Rin asks Kai what he plans to do now. But before he can give his answer, Rin collapses to the ground in exhaustion. Kai is worried and assumes it must be because of the attack she suffered earlier, so he helps her up and says he plans on going back to the city since he doesn't have anywhere to go, so he invites her to stay with him while he's there. Rin is hesitant to agree since she says she doesn't want to go to a human city, so Kai asks why and she tells him that she can't trust other people. Kai is the only one she's willing to trust since he saved her, so he says that she should trust that he will keep her safe, and once again asks her to come with him. She is always free to leave if she ends up feeling uncomfortable there, so Rin ultimately agrees to go with him. Back in his room, Kai is lying on his bed while Rin has his shower, and he is absolutely exhausted from the drive back home. Rin had never been in a car before, so she was freaking out the entire time and nearly made him crash a bunch of times. Fortunately, she is able to hide her wings, so once they got here, no one could tell that she is inhuman, but she still draws a lot of attention with her weird behavior. She can try to fight some people with magic at one point, so Kai had to hold her back. But he can understand why she is so cautious since she is surrounded by people she's not familiar with. Kai then shifts his attention to his sword as he hadn't even realized when it turned back to normal, so he grabs it and is about to say code holder to see if he'll transform again. But before he can do that, Rin comes running out of the shower and asks him for help since she can't figure out how to turn off his shower. Kai says he will help her, but for now he can't look at her since she's not wearing any clothes. After the shower is turned off, Rin has gotten dressed and tells Kai that she thinks it's unfair how humans get all the good stuff. Even with the state of human society, they still have such warm water to shower with, while Rin had to bathe in a waterfall. And humans also have such soft beds too, but on the surface, everything was destroyed, so she realizes Kai wasn't joking when he said the city had been occupied by demons. Kai had been skeptical at first, but meeting Rin has confirmed that he's not crazy, so he now knows for sure that they are in a world where the results of the Great Race War were altered. The correct history is the one where Sid became the hero of the humans, but in this reality he never existed for some reason. Rin suggests that they just need to escape this reality and make their way back to the old one. And that's indeed a solution to their problem, but Kai doesn't know if there's actually a way to do that. They go to bed after that, but late into the night, Rin jolts awake and warns Kai that she senses strong magic, meaning the demons are attacking. Outside, the demons have just torn their way through the city ceiling and are beginning to go on a rampage. Kai had already known that humanity was screwed in this reality, but he didn't realize that humans were this helpless against demons and there's no hero around to save them either, so Kai decides that he needs to step up and take the place of Sid for humanity's sake. The defense units begin firing bullets at the demons, but they already know little bullets aren't going to do anything to help, so Saki runs off to go get the machine gun. 
However, before she can get to it, a demon pulls up behind her and is about to fire a spell at her. But at the last second, Kai jumps in to save her and knocks the demon to the floor. He tells Saki that she should use water against the demons since if their bodies absorb it, they'll become too heavy to fly, and once they are grounded, she should hit them with some grenades. Just then, Kai mimuses Ashran getting turned to stone by a demon, so he fires an anti-magic bullet to interrupt the spell and save his life. The demon proceeds to target Kai and tries to hold him down while another demon comes up behind him to attack, however, Kai slips past him and pushes the first demon away, while Rin blasts the second one. Afterward, Kai thanks Rin for the assist and compliments her on her strength, but even with their combined power, he's not sure they can save the city on their own. Ashran and Saki come running up to Kai and ask him how he was destroying magic with bullets and knocking demons around with his fists. Kai explains to them that he came from a world where humanity won the race war and his fighting technique, along with his special bullets all come from that world. Saki and Ashran still don't believe Kai is serious about there being an alternate timeline, but before they can ask more questions, Ashran gets a message informing him that two demon scouts managed to escape, and if they report back to their leader about the location of this underground city, a whole army of demons are going to show up here and kill off every last human. Ashran says he needs to go report this to the rebel army headquarters and Saki asks Kai to join them in heading there since his strength makes him a valuable asset, so Jean is sure to welcome him. Kai agrees to join them, so they all head for the headquarters located in the old royal capital. The place was destroyed years ago, but that's precisely why they chose to build their headquarters there since demons wouldn't think to search for them. The one who suggested the location was Jin's father, but he retired as the head of the rebel army two years ago due to an injury, so Jin took his place. They soon arrive at HQ and both Kai and Rain are brought to meet Jane. She has already received the reports from Ashran, so she asks Kai to tell her about this alternate timeline he mentioned earlier. Kai tells her everything he knows, but the other officials there call him a liar for daring to make such a bold claim. However, Kai mentions how he was childhood friends with Jean in the previous timeline, and how she always wanted to be like Og and Jur. Hearing those names catches Jean's attention, but she doesn't say anything yet and decides to end the meeting for today. Later that night, Jean asks to meet with Kai and it looks like she is a little more open to the idea that Kai might have been telling the truth since very few people in this world know that she is a woman and the names Og and Jur were the nicknames of her father and grandfather. However, that doesn't mean she believes everything he said, but his combat skills and knowledge are worth relying on. She tells Kai about a plan she has to coordinate with the other human cities and repel the demons that will be coming to invade Neo Vashal. But Rin doesn't think that's a good idea since that would only cause more and more demons to attack as time went on. Plus, if a high-ranking demon were to show up, then the whole plan would instantly fail. Jean is aware it's a reckless plan, but she can't think of anything better to protect the homes of the surviving humans. However, that's when Kai suggests that they only need to go after one demon to resolve this, and that's the hero of demons, Vanessa. Jean thinks it's crazy to even consider attacking a demon as powerful as Vanessa, but Kai is confident that the code holder will be able to work against her, so he says he and Rin will be the ones to challenge Vanessa. The demons are more focused on fighting the other races, so most of their forces won't be at Vanessa's side. All Kai needs is for Jean and her forces to hold off the rest of the demons while he engages Vanessa, so after Jean agrees to it, they immediately begin preparation to reclaim the Urza Federation. As preparations for the mission are being made, we hear a bit of Rin's inner thoughts, and while this world's current condition is due to a race war, she is the most racist of them all. She gets all the races for different reasons, with demons being deceitful, celestials being stubborn, and humans being weak. But most of all, she hates herself since she's part of every race. Kai is the only one who didn't reject her for her complicated Ancestry.com results, so she really hopes that Kai doesn't die on this mission. Once everything is ready, the team heads out and goes over the plan one last time. While the main force is tasked with stalling the rest of the demons, this squad will invade the palace through the underground network and defeat Vanessa, while also freeing any human captives they find. Stacky isn't worried about the main force since they should be alright with Jean leading them. What she's really worried about is that their team is meant to go up against the demon hero, Vanessa, and there's only four of them on this team too. Kai explains that the team is small, so they can minimize travel time, and Saki understands that, but she still doesn't understand why she has to be here. Kai understands that she's scared, but she and Ashran are the only ones he can trust to be his backup. Rin tries to comfort Saki and says everything will be alright since she is strong, so she would never lose to anyone weaker than Vanessa. But considering the fact that Rin lost her last battle with Vanessa, that didn't sound very reassuring. Rin says it's alright since this time she'll do whatever it takes to defeat Vanessa even if she has to self-destruct to take her out, but that still doesn't make Saki feel better. 
While Saki has been freaking out in the back, Ashran admits that he is really worried as well since there's a lot of things they aren't sure about. They have no idea what state the government palace will be once they arrive. And it's also possible that they get spotted by demons before they ever manage to get there. Kai reassures Ashran that the demons won't be able to find them so easily since they're only sensitive to magic and humans don't possess any magical abilities. Knowing that makes him feel a little better, even if he's still nervous, but he can at least look forward to the glory he will get if they manage to defeat the demons. After a few minutes, the convoy has gotten close to their destination, so Jean addresses everyone and thanks them for standing to fight for the sake of humanity. She knows some of them may be concerned about their chances of success since this plan was made last minute, but with how long humanity has been fighting against the demons today is the first time they had a clear path to victory, so this is the day humanity makes its last stand. The group charges out of the tunnel and blows a hole open leading to the surface. As they continue to charge, Kai is shocked to see that the government palace is in terrible condition and surrounded by dozens of demons. The demons finally notice the humans, so one casts a free spell to try and stop them. But Kai already knows how to deal with that spell, so he leaps over the ice and fires a bullet to disrupt the demon's casting, before using the gun to blow the demon up. That's one down, but there are still many more being summoned by the minute, so Kai turns to Rin, and they agree to work together to take out all the demons. Kai points his gun upwards while Rin uses her magic to give him some extra power, and the resultant blast is powerful enough to strike down all the demons outside the palace. Everyone is impressed that Kai was able to take out so many demons at once, but they got to continue with the plan, so Kai says he and the others will begin searching for Vanessa from the top floor, while Jean assigns the remaining troops to guard the entrance to the government palace and rescue any hostages being kept here. As Kai's group is climbing to the first floor, Fallon is starting to get suspicious, since that lighting attack he just did seemed a little too powerful to have come from his gun alone. Almost as if it was amplified by magic, and she's about to accuse Rin of being the source of that magic, but Jean interrupts and reminds her that Kai and Rin are going to fight Vanessa for their sake, so this isn't the time to be questioning them. As they get closer to the top, Rin spots an imp in the middle of summoning a large demon, and it was already too late to stop it as the demon appears next to them and grabs one of the team members. Fallen jumps in to save the guy by chopping the demon's fingers to pieces. She tells the others that she will hold the demon off, so they should go on ahead without her. She promises that she will catch up once she has defeated the demon, and since they don't have time to waste, Jean agrees and says they should meet back up on the top floor. As the team makes it to the top floor, a bolt of lightning is fired at Jean and she is unable to dodge it, so she gets electrocuted to death. Or at least that's what it looked like, but as the smoke clears, Jean is perfectly fine, and it's all thanks to the elven armor she is wearing. She acquired it some years ago from an elf village, and when it comes to magic resistance, this armor is one of the best suits in the world. And since Jean is able to withstand the demon's attacks, she tells Kai that he can go on ahead to find Vanessa while she handles this guy. As Kai and the others make it to the next corridor, they all put on special armbands to help keep them hidden from the demons up ahead. Rid made these using her barrier magic, but since Ashran and Saki don't know that she's not completely human, she makes up a lie and says the armbands were made by a human instead to mimic an angel's barrier magic. The group proceeds to walk down the hall, but a moment later, a huge Reno demon walks out into the hallway and Saki is scared shitless, so she was about to fire a bullet at it even though she knows it wouldn't have done much. However, Rin tells her to put the gun down and wait a minute, and to Saki's relief, the demon walks past without noticing them. After that, they make their way to the breaker room where Saki and Ashran will be stationed as Kai's contingency plan. He is going to face Vanessa and he hopes to defeat her. But in the event that he can't manage it, their job is to turn off all the lights in the building so everyone can escape to fight another day. Rin tells them that if they stay quiet in here, and no demon should be able to find them, so they don't need to worry about fighting for now. They wish Kai and Rin luck, but as the two are making their way to the next floor, they suddenly hear an alarm being set off. They have no idea what's going on since the barrier magic should still be active, so there's no way the demons can see them. But then Kai realizes that it's probably the infrared security system of the building that detected them. Since the demons know they are here, they run to the next room when they are confronted by the demon general. The two of them immediately get into battle stance, and upon noticing Rin's wings, the demon takes a moment to let Rin know that he thinks her wings are disgusting. Kai steps in front of her and asks the demon if it was the one who restored the building's surveillance system. But the demon says it was actually Venice's idea. She was impressed with how well the security system worked, so she decides to have their human slaves maintain it so the demons could use it for themselves. In all honesty, Vanessa was quite pleased with the fact that the humans decides to invade today since she was growing quite bored, and she's curious to know why they decided to do something as stupid as attack the demon's base of operations. Kai asks if the demon would be willing to take him to Vanessa, but the demon intends to kill Kai and Rin for its own enjoyment. 
Kai is ready for a fight, but before he gets the chance to do anything, Rin grabs him by the arm and flies him past all the demons before throwing him over to the next passageway. She then seals the path with ice and tells Kai not to worry since she will catch up to him once she is done with these demons. Kai hates the idea of leaving Rin behind, but he agrees to go on without her as long as she promises to make Gav alive. Rin then turns to the demons and they say they can smell the scent of an angel coming from her, but also that if an angel, elf, dwarf, dragon, and every other race you can think of. They ask what kind of messed up family tree makes someone like her, but Rin has no idea what she is or how she came to be this way, but what she does know is that she hates the demons, and the only person she cares about right now is Kai, so if the demons are going to stand in the way of her being with Kai, then she will show them no mercy. On Kai's end, he has just arrived at Vanessa's throne room where she has been eagerly waiting for some entertainment, and at the same time, Jean and her team are still busy trying to take out that demon, but her sword attacks are proving to be ineffective, so as the demon flinger her away and tries to burn her to ash, Jean takes some drastic measures and unlocks the true form of her sword and turning it into an elven bow, which she uses to strike the demon down. This time, her attack was effective, but it left her weakened since when elven magic items are used by a human who isn't capable of magic, it will chip away at her life force. Jean knows the risks involved in using it, but she is willing to give up her life for the sake of defeating demons. And besides, what she has had to deal with is nothing compared to Kay's job since he has to fight Vanessa. Just then, another demon crashes into the room from the ceiling, but before it can strike Jean, Fallon returns from her fight and knocks it away. Fallon fights with swords made of drake fangs, which is why she is able to contend with the strength of the demons. The troops are outside are currently keeping the rest of the demons from making it inside the palace, but there's a limit to how long they can hold out, so everything depends on Kai's battle with Vanessa. Vanessa asks if Kai would be willing to put down his gun and give up right away. Most people would be surprised to learn that the strongest demon is a succubus, and since she was getting pretty bored, she offers to ride Kai's stick shift to pass the time. Kai immediately refuses, and Vanessa finds him amusing since most men would have folded on the spot after hearing her offer. She had heard that the human rebels had a commander who used elven armaments, so she wonders if Kai is that person, but Kai corrects her and says he is an outsider who came from a world where Vanessa was defeated. Vanessa doesn't believe him at first, but Kai doesn't look like he's lying, so she asks him which race defeated her in his world. She was expecting to hear something like the dragons, but Kai tells her that it was humans who killed her in his world. Vanessa finds this hilarious, so she starts laughing hysterically. You may not be able to see it, but the animation budget was well spent on some very necessary jiggle physics. She asks who was the human capable of killing her, so Kai tells her it was a human named Sid, and as soon as he says that name, memories start flooding Vanessa's mind from the previous timeline, including her knowledge about the code holder and world reincarnation, but a few seconds later, she goes back to normal and decides to kill Kai once and for all. She begins casting a spell, but Kai uses his gun to interrupt it and closes the distance to slash her across the chest, but it turns out to have all been an illusion as Vanessa appears behind him and attempts to blast Kai. Kai manages to escape and Vanessa is impressed by his reaction speed, as well as his weapon since it is capable of disrupting her magic and can produce a force equal to that of a dragon's breath. But that doesn't change a thing since she's still going to kill Kai and to do that she casts a devastation purgatory flame spell that nearly turns Kai to ash. He managed to survive that one, but the next spell Vanessa starts casting is an area of effect spell, so there's no way anyone who isn't a hero would be able to survive it. However, after she casts the spell, Kai is still standing, all thanks to the code holder. Just then, Kai hears Rin yell for him to stand back, and in the next moment, Vanessa gets struck by lightning. Rin defeated those demons, although it left her pretty badly wounded, but she was so worried about Kai that she rushed over as soon as possible to help him. Kai is worried about her, but they still got to deal with Vanessa for now, so they prepare for their fight, but unexpectedly, that monster from earlier shows up and grabs Vanessa. It says Vanessa has been corrupted after hearing the taboo word, Sid, so is going to erase her code from the world. After seeing it, Vanessa finally remembers Last Riser, and as she is about to get erased, she uses all her power to break free and blast the monster into oblivion. The monster survives, but it goes. I have made a miscalculation, I ain't built for this, so have a nice day. Kai is shocked by the level of power Vanessa just displayed, so he asks Rin if she was really able to hold her own against someone as strong as Vanessa, but the last time Rin fought her, Vanessa was nowhere near as strong as she is now. This was the end of episode 3. Subscribe to not miss the next part.